Every December, the world agrees on one thing. Everything must become aggressively red and green. Trees, green. Decorations, red. Sweaters, painfully both. But no one ever stops and asks the real question. Why these two colors? Why not blue and silver? Why not purple and gold? Why not black and neon orange like Halloween refusing to leave? Somehow, red and green became the official colors of Christmas, globally accepted, legally binding, and emotionally unavoidable. So where did this color combo come from? Is it religion? Nature? Marketing? A very successful berry? I'm Professor Everything, and today we'll be answering the question, why are red and green the colors of Christmas? Right here on Explaining Everything. Before Christmas had lights, ornaments, or Mariah Carey, it had plants, specifically evergreens and holly. Evergreen trees stay green all year, even in winter when everything else looks dead, tired, and emotionally unavailable. Ancient cultures saw this as a symbol of life, renewal, and survival during the darkest months. Long before Christianity, people decorated with evergreen branches during winter solstice celebrations. It was basically ancient humanity saying, everything is terrible, but this tree refuses to give up. Now enter holly. Holly plants stay green and grow bright red berries in winter, which stand out vividly against snowy, dull landscapes. This wasn't just pretty, it was practical. Bright colors signaled vitality and importance in an otherwise lifeless environment. Anthropologists believe early humans were especially drawn to red and green together because those colors often meant food. Ripe berries against green leaves equaled survival. So when winter decorations used those same colors, our brains quietly went, ah, yes, life, resources, hope, congratulations, Christmas decorations are accidentally prehistoric comfort signals. Nature didn't plan Christmas, but it absolutely nailed the color palette. Once Christmas became a Christian holiday, red and green picked up symbolic meaning. Green came to represent eternal life, rebirth, and hope, very on brand for a holiday about birth and renewal. Red, meanwhile, symbolized sacrifice, love, and the blood of Christ. Christianity does not shy away from intense symbolism, ever. Together, the colors told a layered story. Life continues. Hope exists. Someone suffered for this holiday. Please enjoy responsibly. Church decorations, stained glass, paintings and garments reinforced this color pairing for centuries, especially during Advent and Christmas celebrations. What's interesting is that Christianity didn't randomly choose these meanings. It adapted symbols people already understood. Green already meant life. Red already meant importance, danger, or sacrifice. The religion essentially rebranded familiar colors with theological depth, which made the symbolism easier to accept and harder to forget. By the time Christmas traditions spread across Europe, red and green were no longer optional. They were spiritually endorsed. Good luck changing that. Let's talk about your eyeballs for a moment. Red and green are complementary colors, meaning they sit opposite each other on the color wheel. When placed together, they create a strong visual contrast and demand attention. This is perfect for winter, which is mostly a depressing palette of white, gray, and brown. Red and green cut through that visual boredom like festive lasers. Your brain processes high contrast color combinations faster. That's why warning signs, traffic lights, 
and sail banners love bold color pairings. There's also a biological reason this combo feels right. Human vision evolved to be especially sensitive to red-green contrast because it helped our ancestors spot ripe fruit among foliage. So when you see red ornaments on a green tree, your brain reacts the same way it did 50,000 years ago by paying attention immediately and feeling mildly pleased. You're not feeling holiday cheer. Your visual system thinks it found berries. Science is magical like that. By the 19th century, red and green were already deeply associated with Christmas, but mass printing and advertising locked them in permanently. Christmas cards, posters, decorations, and later store displays leaned into red and green because they were instantly recognizable and visually striking. Then came Santa Claus. Santa didn't invent the colors, but his red suit absolutely reinforced them. Popular illustrations in the late 1800s standardized his look, and once mass media got involved, red officially became Santa's brand. Green followed naturally, trees, wreaths, garlands, backgrounds. At this point, repetition did the rest. When a color scheme appears everywhere, every year, across generations, it stops being a choice and becomes a rule. Red and green turned into visual shorthand for Christmas, meaning you can slap those colors on literally anything and people will instantly feel festive, or at least pressured to buy it. That's not a coincidence. That's cultural conditioning wearing a sweater. So why are red and green the colors of Christmas? Because nature introduced them. Religion gave them meaning. Biology made them effective. And culture refused to let them go. They represent life in winter, sacrifice, and hope. A visual contrast your brain loves and centuries of repetition that turned a color choice into a tradition. Red and green aren't just festive. They're historically optimized. And every December, without questioning it, we all participate. Because deep down, your brain still sees berries and says, yes, this is correct. Bring snacks. If you like this video, hit that like button and subscribe. Also, if you have suggestions for our next video, Feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. If you enjoyed this video, please check out our other bingeable channels. Thank you for tuning in and join us next time here in the channel that answers all the why, what, who, where, and how questions you've always wondered about here on Explaining everything.